actually a really long multi-decade story. Uh, our family has been involved in the UAE in one way or the other since the 1980s. Uh, and we've seen in front of us uh, how this incredible place has grown. We've always been uh, excited and from our heart wanting to be part of this journey. And so it's not so much as a decision that, hello, let's look at the UAE as a market. And to be honest, the market is fantastic. It's growing. A lot of new people are coming in almost every day, particularly post-COVID. I think it's probably, A, handled COVID the best in the world, and second, has created a true reputation for itself of being efficient, well-governed, and a place that is serious about people and serious about business. So for us, uh, our education commitment uh, is almost, I think now, six decades old. And therefore, combining these two loves, the desire to see us being a part of the UAE journey, and as well as, as making an impact socially, I think that's what really brought us here. One of the things that we discovered post-COVID-19 is that how much uh, education is cherished and loved and needed by students across the world. We knew this, but I think COVID really honed it in when people were sitting at home and wondering, uh, will I ever be able to go back into the classroom? Will I ever be able to resume the normalcy of structured education? Our excitement about being in this market is that in one hand, people here already know us. You know, many of them have, have worked with us, uh, many of them come from the Indian subcontinent and have experienced the quality of education. You know, to share a large number of our alumni, a large uh, number of our former teachers and principals are here in this market already. So it doesn't feel like coming to a new place. Honestly, it feels like coming to a, a second home. And I think that what uh, truly excites us, being able to bring that level of quality, innovation and values that we have always prized at APG Education uh, to the UAE and work with fantastic people here who share in those values and who want to do amazing things together. We've been over-investing in education uh, for years. We put a computer in every classroom in the early 2000s. We had mandatory coding education for every student uh, for all years starting, I think, in 1996. We were all in the cloud and the first one to really implement cloud uh, fully in, in 2008 and, and 2010. So we've had a huge pipeline of what we really wanted to accomplish. But we also had a lot of key learnings. We learned earlier on what works, what doesn't work, things that can be done, things that sound nice, are very glamorous, but don't really have long-term impact. And I see, particularly in the UAE, a massive opportunity in the next uh, five years for a uh, huge digital transformation. For me, the best part is that, you know, we should spend a long time convincing our key stakeholders about the need for this transformation. And that includes students, parents, uh, faculty, teachers, uh, regulators, you know, where we have to demonstrate to them that this can be done and what is the value of it. What COVID-19 did was put all of them front and center. And so it's a great joy to now work with them because the question is no longer do we need a, a redo or a digital transformation, but rather how, when and what. And that's wonderful. We fundamentally believe that a lot of things that you teach have to be practiced in the culture of the institutions. So if you're saying we want to be a, a digital first organization, does that reflect in every single thing you do that is the DNA of your organization? And, and as I shared earlier, you know, we've been focused and obsessed with technology for decades. You know, uh, one of the wonderful joys is that if every single student, and this is since 1996, it has to take programming classes all the way from, uh, uh, from pre-K uh, till they graduate, it, it fundamentally changes how they interact and how they work with uh, technology. Uh, all of our teachers, have adopted this, this you know, incredible technology-first approach, not just in the tools they used, but the attitude that they bring uh, to the system. When the lockdowns happened, we were fully online, exams, everything, in about 24 hours. And uh, one part of that was all the technology investments we had done. But honestly, the major part was 
that our students and teachers were ready. You know, no one slept for three months. You know, <laughs> it was a 24 hour job to sort of really support this effort and get it done. But because they imbibed uh, those values on technology, because they had lived it for so many years earlier, it wasn't a jarring uh, transition. There was a more of an, a sort of a quick adaptation. And we found that was very unique to us. You know, we, we saw a lot of other people, a lot of very known brands in education who had invested in technology or were talking about technology, but it hadn't seeped into their DNA. And I think that's a big change that we see. And it's something that we bring to the table is that culture of technology that works throughout the organization. COVID affected uh, all our stakeholders. I would say our, our transition and reaction to it was in phases. You know, first was the mad scramble to make sure that we deliver on our promises to our students, their parents, and to our stakeholders, providing an extraordinary education uh, wherever they are. I think pre-COVID, uh, our uh, rate of expansion of our institutions was very organic. You know, we felt that, you know, one or two or three per year was a good way to go. but you know, through this period, the number of people, of partners all across the world, quite frankly, I know MENA being a large region of it, but even Europe and US coming to us and saying, hey, you guys knocked it out of the park. Teach us, help us, support us, help us grow. And so for us now, the entire move is not just about focusing on creating world-class education institutions, but enabling existing and other education institutions uh, to also grow. And, uh, you know, we win when they win. And so the idea is to create those, those partnerships all across the re region. And I think that's a very new thinking that we have got in the last two years, where it's simply not enough for us to focus on our own institutions, but really to enable and help others to achieve the same high quality uh, on a joint partnership basis. In the, in, in the 70s and 80s, used to use a phrase that, you know, we unlock the full potential of a child or of a student, right? And I think it makes me sad because everybody just seems to have cut, copy, pasted that and has become like every institution claims that. But the biggest question is how, right? Can you answer how? How is the culture of your institutions really supporting that? If, if we say we are supporting entrepreneurship, how many opportunities for entrepreneurship do our, do our students get on a day-to-day -day basis in the classroom? Are the teachers supporting them in trying something new, taking risks, really doing something different? If we say we have human values, how does that reflect in your evaluation process? What signals are you sending to your students on a day-to-day -day basis? The activities you do, uh, the kind of feedback that they give. So for us, an ideal institution uh, is the one that lives really lives and practices what it's trying to teach. Kids these days are super smart. They are going to look and see, hey, you're telling me this, but you're doing this. You are uh, you know, uh, saying that this is what matters to you, but you're incentivizing this. And so an ideal education institution actually embodies uh, the values, the curriculum, the mission that it's really trying to uphold. And you know, that could be lending. We have a view. On, on what we believe a great education in, institution should provide. And for us, you know, in, in a few words, is to create extraordinary leaders who are able to act for today and for tomorrow. That's, of course, a, a very big summary of it. Every education institution has their own purpose. And we, are, and we love seeing often the diversity of offerings that exist in the world. But if you ask for the ideal, the ideal is when they embody those offerings, when they embody the value proposition that they're giving in students and parents, when they walk the line, walk the talk, uh, you know, really do what they say that they will do. That to us creates an, an experiential space where students truly are learning and imbibing what you want them to learn. We're very uh, excited to work with SEED. I think although we are very familiar with the UAE, we have been here, we have friends, uh, we have customers, we have a whole bunch of people on the ground as well. But, but what we loved uh, about Seed was the unique insight they bring to the market, uh, as well as a very determined process to allow partners to succeed. We felt that working with Seed, we could perhaps accomplish what would take us maybe three to five years in maybe one or two. And so we're very happy to work with a partner who shares our, our, our values, their, uh, our long-term understanding of how 
uh, how people work with each other. You know, our partnerships in other markets tend to work out for 10, 20, 30 years. And in the space of education, honestly, even 12 years is very short term. And so part of it is understanding the expertise that Seed brings to this market. But second, the desire to work with a partner that we feel we can be partners, not just for our short entry for this product or service or enablement in the UAE, but something we can continue uh, for 10, 20, 30 years uh, ahead as well. It starts all with a simple question of values. Do you trust each other? Is there a semblance of good faith that, hey, we are on the same journey together? We have a long-term destiny as part of, of our value system. We believe that we are going for a journey which is highly impactful and which will take us several decades. Our goal is to try to enable our partners to do the best that they can. And if our partners are doing the best that, that they can, they will allow us and in fact make us be the best that, that we are. And at the end of the day, our focus is on our end customers, our end consumers, uh, the people who put their trust in us and our partner ecosystem. And so having that in-depth connectivity uh, between all of us uh, allows us to, to really present a, a valuable and worthwhile proposition all across our customer ecosystem.